my channel for the first ever makeup and book club, I was trying to figure out something that I could do while I'm doing my makeup that um, should be fun. And I wanted to start a book club, so I think I'm going to do both. We're going to do a book club slash me putting on my makeup slash get ready with me. Um, the first thing is before we started this, I put on the liquid glass, whatever this is from BoxyCharm a while ago. It makes my face kind of sticky, but it also like moisturizes my face. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Tarte Double double Duty Beauty right here. And we're going to put this on my face and I'm going to introduce the book. I do want to read the name of the book so I don't screw it up because I'm good at that. But the name of the book is Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. This book you can get free on... I'm just going to put it on my fingers and then dab it on my face. You can get free right now from Audible. I will leave the link down below. Um... I did take notes for this. I'm going to try not to refer to my notes as much because then I can't look at y'all while I'm talking. But I did write notes down. And it's a really, really, I want to start with it's a really good book. There is some historical debate. One second, guys. Some historical debate on whether the book is actually legit or not. It was written as a factual or a kind of novel because it does resemble heroine slash kind of romance novels of the day. Well, what am I doing here? I am adding um, NYX HD Green because you can see there's a lot of red on my face. And I'm going to need to cover it. This is the first time I've ever used this, so we'll find out how it works together. Um, so it starts off in the very beginning with Harriet, whose pseudonym is Linda. And she talks about her early childhood and how she had some privileges and some fortunate things that other slaves did not have given the fact that her father was a well-skilled carpenter and that her mistress, her original mistress was very, very kind and that she did not even know until later on that she was a slave, which is also part of why they have such a hard time believing, this is actually hard to blend out, a hard time believing that she actually wrote this as a historical and not a but i actually do reading some other slaves accounts believe that some tra slaves were treated better than others especially those that were skilled and they could get away with some stuff that other slaves couldn't doesn't make it right slavery is disgusting and this book will later show how gross it actually gets but um so she talks about her kind older mistress and how she taught her things like being a seamstress and other skills that she can use later on to help her actually navigate in the world. All right, so the next thing we're going to use is this Flower Beauty. I got it on sale at Walmart because I think Walmart's getting rid of it. Light Illusion in the shade ah, da, 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 Porcelain Light. Oh, yes, we were talking about... um how she liked her mistress and how she uh, was able to learn some skills that will become crucial later on in the book. But unfortunately, her mistress dies. And this is where you see the first real, like, bit of nastiness that happens to occur. Um, her grandmother, Aunt Martha is what she calls her in the book, is a well-respected baker in the community, but she is a slave, unfortunately. And she saved up a bunch of money to buy her children and she lent that money to her mistress, but because back then, slaves could not enter into contracts because they were property, which is absolutely freaking disgusting, um, her mistress never paid her back. Well, when her mistress dies, she is willed to Dr. Flint, who in my notes, let me read you what I wrote in my notes to explain how nasty this guy is. In my notes, when I wrote down his name, I wrote, Mr. Flint, evil ass, evil ass hat who should have died in the beginning. So I should tell you how I feel about Flint. So she is willed, and her granddaughter is willed to, um, his daughter, who is at the time a minor. I think she's like five. So technically, Mr. Flint, or Dr. Flint, or Dr. Douche, owns her. And uh, it gets much worse later on. But he also owns the grandmother. And he is supposed to set the grandmother free. She is too old to really do anything. 
even though uh, she raises the grandkids, but we'll get to that in a minute. But he's supposed to honor what the um, original mistress wanted, even though, you know, she should have set her free and never owned slaves to begin with. But instead of doing the right thing, he puts her up on the auction block. Yeah. The product I'm going to use is my all-nighter um, setting powder. So he puts her up on the auction block. And for regular slaves, it's humiliating for a slave as proud as Aunt Martha. It's absolutely horrific. But she is bought and purchased by a woman and nobody bites her on it because she is doing the right thing. An older lady, she buys her and gives her her freedom. And all the money that Aunt Martha has used to save up, she buys herself a cabin where her kids and grandkids and herself can all live. And she can sell fruits and jams and all sorts of other things, which she's known for. Which gives Linda a little bit more normalcy. But unfortunately, at the age of 12, Linda's mother dies. And that is where we start to jump into the more awful and horrific things of this book. Her mother's death, but she's around 12. Oh, off camera, I put on this. I did that off camera because I look like a freak when I do it. Um, we are going to jump into something that I just got. And I will be doing, you should look, if you're interested, you should look at my uh, mini haul that I'll be doing. That will be up later today. That will show everything that I got. But I did get some palettes, and I figured I would make a look out of the first one that I pulled out. So let's see which one it's going to be. It is going to be, um, Orange Sorbet is what we're going to make a look out of. It's a BH. This will be the first time I'm using it. I'm super excited. I am so super excited. But she's about 14. So Linda is about 14. And, um, she and her brother... Let me check her brother's name. I'm really bad with names. I apologize. That's why I write them down in advance. Because I can remember the story, but I can never remember the names. Her brother, William. Her little brother, William, is... William is... Her and her little brother, William, are sent to go to Dr. Flint's plantation. Because he owns her. Where uh, Linda becomes um, Dr. Flint's daughter's, like, companion, helpmate. Uh, they're both really young, so she just basically is responsible for taking care of this little girl. And uh, I'm going to go in with Tangerine and just put it everywhere. And so she's there taking care of this. Well, Dr. Flint being the douche of all douche. And this was fairly common back then. People like to try and cover it up and act like it didn't happen. But I want to be very clear. This was not uncommon for the freaking time. Had a history of sleeping with his slaves. Now, I'm going to go with it was assault of the, you know, gross variety that I can't say and keep monetization and get this video viewed. Um, so he has a history of doing that with his, uh, female slaves. And then when they get pregnant, he sells them off. Well, Linda is a good Christian girl, which there's a lot of hole where she hates herself in this that I hate, but like the whole Christianity thing where she feels like she did something wrong when she didn't. And we'll get into that later. But being a good Christian girl doesn't want Dr. Flint to touch her. Which, personally, I think he's freaking disgusting. And in Dr. Flint's mind, he needs some sort of consent, even though it is never consent. So he starts to harass her. She never, ever gives into it. And we'll get into that also in a little bit. Alright, so now that we've got that all over the lid, I am going to go into the corners. And just a little bit into the crease with this orange color right here. Zest. And so he starts pursuing her. At this point, she knows how to read, so he tries to send her letters, but she pretends like she can't read them because she's a smart girl. And she ignores his advances and tries to find every which way she can to not have to deal with this. And at the same time, he's still doing this to other women, and we hear about other women whose children, whose babies, by him, are ripped from their mother and sold on the slave box. Which is horrifically disgusting, if you ask me. You have no right to rip a child from their mother. Alright. I'm going to go in with a smaller brush that is actually from this collection. And like I said, he's still sleeping with... And I'm just going to go into the inner corner here with chocolate drizzle. And yeah, he's still harassing and trying to get her while sleeping with... And you're watching... 
girls that succumb to this being sold off because Mrs. Flint, the mistress of the house, is mad that these girls are sleeping with her husband. Well, I got news for you. Keep your husband stick in his pants and maybe these women wouldn't feel harassed and be assaulted by your douche heart of a husband. Just a theory. All right. So she hits about 14 or 15 and she meets another white guy. And I don't even remember his name. He doesn't really matter that much to the story. But she meets this guy. And I am going to just try with this fluffy brush here, just try to blend out the edges here and make it a little more blended as I go through. And tries to convince her or comes up and talks to her. And she feels like she has no choice. The lesser of two evils, her whole thing is to get this guy on her side and hopefully she'll eventually be able to, if she has kids and stuff by this guy, that he will sell her. He'll get so mad that he will sell her and he'll leave her alone. I mean, and she feels really ashamed too. Being a good Christian girl, she feels really ashamed, which has messed the frack up because she had no say in the matter. All right, I'm going to go in with uh, primer water. Photo finish. This is always what I use to wet down my brush. I'm going to use this tiny little brush right here just for the detail work because I like it that way. And I'm going to go in with um, Cretin, Cretin, this color right here. I don't know if you can see it, yeah. And she gets pregnant with her daughter. And of course, Dr. Flint does not like this and demands to know who it was and is pissed that it's a white guy and that while she's sleeping with a white guy, she still won't go within 10 feet of him and I don't blame her. Personally, I wouldn't have slept with the other white guy either because white guys back then were fucking gross. But she goes and she has her first daughter. Well... He doesn't like this. The mistress doesn't like this. I don't know if the mistress suspected, Mrs. Flint suspected that it was his kid or it was someone else's kid, but she starts to treat her a whole lot worse. And a couple of years go by and he's still trying to like get there and hit that. And in this time, she also tells a story of a slave who, um, and I'm just gonna go into the corners down here with this yum that had tried to escape and when they caught him and brought him back via the dogs they did it and they stuffed him in a gin mill where he died because if life wasn't already gross enough let's go ahead and do that so i give this a minute so then she um she gets pregnant again by the same man. And then she has a son. And his name is, and I'm so bad at names. I apologize, I have to look at the list of names, but I always do. Um, it's Benny. She gets pregnant with Benny, who is so sweet. Like, he's the sweetest kid ever. And she gets pregnant by this, she gets pregnant again, and she has Benny. Well, when Benny's just about, it kind of skips forward, and when Benny is about two, Dr. Flint gets mad at Linda for still rejecting him, and he throws Benny across the room, and she hopes down deep down that Benny might be dead because as much as she loves her son and as terrified as she is for him being a slave is not the life she wants for her children all right I'm gonna do my um the rest of my eyes off camera and I'll be right back so he's really mad and he hurts he hurts Benny and then it kind of skips forward a few years now I'm using a white I'm using the 24-7 uh, Urban Decay eyeliner pencil because white makes your eyes look bigger and I have tiny eyes so I like to use white when I'm not planning on using a color down below. Just pop it right in there. Alright, the products and things I did do off camera were um the 20 or the uh Too Faced Better Than Sex liner and the e.l.f. Uh, concealer. Contamo concealer, and this one is the hydrating finish. I have both. This is how to be the hydrating finish. She gets a little bit older, and she's she is um she and the kids move back in 
or are still living in that cabin. And she hears that the um, master has decided that he's going to bring her back to the plantation from the cabin that she was living in. And he was going to bring the kids because the kids are now old enough to start learning duties on the plantation. This is the absolute last thing that she wants. So she devises a plan. And uh, the plan is to make it look like she ran away so that he will sell the children. All right, we're going to go into the blush now. We're going to use the BH Vanilla Peach Trussle. I just got this today too. It looks like this. It's pretty awesome. All right, and I'm going to use this. This brush, which is one from the Cupcake Collection. And I'm going to go into the first top two colors. And he, um, so she devises this plan to make it look like she ran away so that he will sell the children. Because he's a history of doing that when slaves run away. Selling the children and just trying to collect his losses because nobody wants the children of a runaway slave. So that's what she does. She devises a plan to run away and she actually ends up hiding in the house of another white woman in her attic. Well, the white woman who's still owns slaves, and people call these people good, and I never understood that. Why are you calling this person good? They did one good thing. Good for them. All right, now I'm going to um, use this to kind of buff right in. And um, she hides her up there for about six months, but she can't keep her. So then she's forced to devise another plan. And the plan starts off, because she knows there's no way she's going to, because she can't get to the to the ships to get up north. So she devises a plan, and her grandmother devises a plan, and the children are taken to her grandmother's. And she then proceeds to hide out in what sounds like to me, and given the location of the book, it's probably the Great Dismal Swamp. Um, I'm an area near the Great Dismal Swamp, and there's actually an entire trail that I love to go on when I need to be reminded of how easy I've got it. Slaves used to hide out there, and she talks about her first day there, how she got she got eaten alive by mosquitoes and all sorts of other stuff. But at night, she's returned to her grandmother's place where they have built this kind of shelter for her in her attic, where she will then spend the next seven years where she cannot really move around. She can't do anything. The next seven years. That's how badly she wants to get away from this guy. Seven years. Seven years. And in the time that she's up there... He still has no idea where she is, and he's still determined to get her back because he's gross. All right, so we did that. He's still determined to get her back. All right, we're going to do another BH product, which is this highlighter palette. Dual highlighter, nine color palette from BH Cosmetics. Looks like this. I think I am probably going to jump into these two colors right here. With my, unfortunately, Jeffree Star, don't waste. It is the, um... I don't know. It's the highlighter brush from Morphe. Um, so she has sufficiently hidden in this attic. And she's there for, I think, four or five years before he finally gives up and sells her kids to the guy that fathered them. Back then, white men did not own up to father. Everybody knew whose kid belonged to who, but white men did not own up. The fathering children. I will be right back. I am going to put my lips on. I went in with the BH Sorbet lip liner and the BH liquid lipstick in Serena. Serena? It's that right there. Okay. And so she's hiding up in the attic. And while she's doing this, Dr. Flint is making every effort to recover her because he's a freak. And he makes a couple trips up to New York, even lies to her grandmother and tries to say that she wrote this note, even though she's up in the attic. And yes, she did write a note and have it sent from New York, but he tries to say that she wants to come home and you should just tell her to come home. All this manipulative lying bull crap to try and retrieve her. Little does he know she's actually up in her grandmother's attic while her grandmother is raising her two kids. And she watches from this tiny little crack as her kids grow up. And you later find out that Benny knew the whole time. But, um, so she is up in the attic watching this. She's watching him lie. She's watching them search for her and do all this weird stuff. In the meantime, she's really uncomfortable. She's in this tiny little space. And she, to tell you how bad slavery is and how bad sexual harassment in this, in, with slavery, 
this woman hid in a tiny crawl space that hurt her, that made it hard for her to walk, that probably did permanent damage to her joints because she deemed that better than having to deal with Dr. Flint. So she does this for seven years, probably about four or five years into this, Dr. Flint gets frustrated and ends up selling off um, Benny and uh, or Ellen to the father of her. And um, he says that he will give them freedom or whatnot and whatever. But um, she's still worried about it. As long as they were there, he can try and reclaim them because technically slaves, unfortunately, are the property of the owner of the mother. Meaning if the father is free, the child would not be free. If the mother's a slave, the child is a slave, which is so beyond fucked. And um, so she starts to worry about her children. So she then arranges a way to meet the father of her children and ask him to get them out of the South where they can no longer be used because he has always intended them to be free. But Dr. Flint, being as gross as he is, tries to say that they were not his to sell. So he now wants them back and keeps threatening to take the children back. So he sends them to two different places. Um, at first, they send Ellen away and then they send Billy or Benny away. And she doesn't see them for, I think, a couple of years while they are locked in the attic. Or while she's locked in the attic and they are in different places. <laughs> she then eventually is able to work her way to New York where she meets up with her daughter who is supposed to be being treated well and as an equal but is underclothed, underfed, and uncared for and is being used like a slave. Like if they go back down into the south she's very worried that the person that is supposed to be caring for her daughter is going to make her a slave. Again, so she's very worried about that. Um, she gets work with a uh, with a woman as a nursemaid and a mother, like a, a nanny type situation and word gets back to Dr. Flint who then tries to go up and get her but she sneaks away in time and then she comes back and she eventually has to confess to that mistress and um she ends up not working for her um she ends up going other places to avoid him and several years go by Flint finally dies and I did a happy dance, like such a happy dance. He finally dies of old age. The fucker did not decide to deserve to die of old age. He personally deserved to die by a hundred bee stings to the dick. That's not the point. His daughter then tries to claim her, but she will not go. She is eventually purchased by the mistress she is currently working for, who then grants her her freedom. She then lives out the remainders of her years. You can look her up. You can see more detail of the book. That was just a brief synopsis of the whole book quickly. Um, I hope to get better with these book reviews. I'm just doing the best I can here while doing my makeup. And I definitely suggest you read it. The next book we're going to be reading, I will link down below. Um, I'm not, nah, I'm not gonna get through that one in time. We'll do Pride and Prejudice next. I can do a whole lot better on Pride and Prejudice. And I will see y'all later.